So we're actually walking down the Titanic. And you can see Black Haired Lighthouse over there, which you will which makes an excellent guide for coming through the Copeland's approach, doesn't it? And Donica D signed. I know it's been a long time since I've been back to uh, Belfast and Northern Ireland and things, but I thought it was lovely of them to put a fireworks display on to welcome me back. <laughs> it's not often you get that sort of thing. It's not scary. Yeah. So from here, you can see where I grew up, over on that side. You can see the power station, Kilroute. See white head in the dip, and you can see black head lighthouse over there, which you will, which makes an excellent guide for coming through the Copeland's approach, doesn't it? And Donica D signed. Yeah, yeah, it was a brilliant guide for the approach. And round there, I don't know if it'll show in the video or not, is what we think is the Isle of Man, just visible over that way, and you can see all these nice old houses, which are mostly holiday lets and things. But over that way toward Blackhead, just in the distance, you might just be able to make out Scotland. Yeah, just behind that big sailboat or rock or whatever it is it's out to sea. Try it. Gainer, where are we today? Well, we're uh, just outside Samson and Goliath, and we're going to go and see the uh, Titanic. Yep, this is Harland and Wolf shipyard where the Titanic was built. This is the modern day uh, part of the shipyard, but the Titanic slip is still here. Yeah. Let's go look at it. Yep. It's a Titanic that's been done like an airfix kit. You could press out the bits you want and put them all back. We got funnels, they got the main body of the hull, and they got propellers. And down here in the background, we've got Belfast Abercorn Basin and some yachts parked in it. We could have come down here, but we decided to do Bangor. You can go over there, then come yeah. down. This is the um, Nomadic, which was the Titanic's tender, or its dinghy if you prefer. The Nomadic is the only surviving White Star Line ship. This is where the Titanic was actually built. And these pillars represent where the ship sat originally. It sat between the set of pillars here and that set of pillars down over there. And this over here is where the bow originally sat. And you can see the bogey rails that was used to slide the ship back toward the water. It's all been filled in now as part of this exhibition. But uh, we're going to go down and have a look. Jacob Astor, and then over here, where is it? No, it's down here, look, we have Gu oh. Guggenheim. Guggenheim. Yeah, these are the, some of the first class passengers. She bought the second class. Yeah. Unfortunately, the plaque's a little worse for wear, but that's how things go sometimes. This part behind us, toward the Titanic building, is the original slipway on which the ship was built. And these are the rails on which it slid back. But what they've done over here is they've filled the area out and they have marked things from the ship. This is the first funnel. 
there are more funnels down there and things like that. So gainer, for sense of scale, pop into the middle of the funnel. And that shows you just how wide the funnel was. I have no idea how high it was, but it gives you an idea of the width. As Gainer does her Titanic. I'll do my Titanic moment. Ah! <laughs> it needs to be down there. Yeah. This is the, um, this is the back of the ship. Yeah. No, the prow was up at that end. We're walking towards the stern. Yes, we are. So, I have no idea what this big square was, but you can see another funnel coming up ahead. So we're actually walking down the Titanic. Yeah. And there's the lifeboats. The lifeboat stations, yes, you can see those over that direction. So we'll go and look at those in a minute. And you can see why they said, you can understand why it was inadequate. Yes, indeed. For a ship that had 1,500 people aboard. And you can see the lifeboats are marked out here. Oh, they're totally inadequate. There's only four on this side and four on the other side. And although they were inflatables, or not inflatables, um, they were like canvas ones they constructed as well. Yeah, but look at this in comparison to me. Yeah. Possibly, maybe 30 to squeeze. A squeeze, but you're not, you're not talking any more than that. No, so for eight of them, you're talking like two, three hundred people? Yeah, and like you say, there were what, a thousand or whatever? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. It's hungry enough. Looks like this part's been done as the stern of the boat. Just to give you some idea. And the pry is way, way up there. there. Definitely quite a big boat. Touch bigger than Salty Lass. <laughs> I think the buildings have changed a bit since I was uh, much, much younger, but um, one of these buildings used to be known as Dubarry's, and it was uh, well known among sailors and people who came in off the boats as the, the whorehouse next to the docks. Um, so I can understand why the City Council might have knocked that one down while keeping historic pubs next door to it, but it was a well known piece of Belfast culture. We went to the Duke of York pub near St Anne's Cathedral, which is either the oldest pub in Belfast or the site of the oldest pub in Belfast, depending whether you speak to myself or Gaynor. Things did get a bit heated in the debate. The walls of the Duke of York are covered in pub memorabilia, beer mats and things like that. It's absolutely fascinating to go around looking at it all. <sighs> this place is full of Guinness. Memorabilia. So, if I could actually drink Guinness, this is where I'd go. These are some other old pubs, but that one just down there is the one I want to go to the Crown. <laughs> Here, 